in the activity of making work, there's a sense that if you spend a day or two days drawing an object or an image, there's a sympathy towards that object embodied in the human labor of making the drawing. And for me, there is something in the dedication to the image, whether it's you know, Jericho painting guillotined heads. So on the one hand, it's a shocking image, but there's something about the hours of physically studying those heads and painting them that becomes a compassionate act for me. Even though on the one hand, you can say, well, it's very cold-bloodedly and ghoulishly looking at disaster or using other people's pain as raw material for the work. That's what every artist does, is use other people's pain as well as their own as raw material. So there is a kind of a, if not a vampire, certainly an appropriation of other people's distress in the activity of being a writer or an artist. But there's also something in the activity of both contemplating, depicting and spending the time with it, which I hope as an artist redeems the activity from one of simply exploitation and abuse. Welcome, Art 7, to the first day of class. That was Willem Kentrich. He is a South African artist that works primarily with charcoal and eraser. And so he takes pictures of uh, each, uh, each mark that he makes to create these really deep, heavy charcoal animations that are heavily political, that deal with apartheid race, uh, the economy of South Africa and its identity it deals with the, the human condition as a whole. Um, this is Art 7, beginning drawing. I wanted to uh, welcome you to the first day of class. I'm just going to go over the syllabus, or go, over, go over some of the basic things that you should expect in this semester. Again, my name is Caleb Duarte. I'll be with you for about 18 weeks trying to bust this semester out, trying to make it as, as smooth as we can. I know that you all might have other pressing classes along with the economic hardship and the pandemic, uh, the polarizations of the political spectrum, um, a lot going on, a lot for us to handle. There's a rise on suicide and on illness and on poverty. Um, with climate change, with anxiety and solitude and social isolation, and then da 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 da. So there's a lot, um, there's a lot for us to to deal with right now. But I think uh, through the process of observation and drawing that we can actually take a step back and view the world from a healthy distance, in order for us to make sense of who we are and what we're doing and what our goals should be, right? How to be present, um, how to be um, still through the process of observation and through the process of art making, um, through drawing. That said, I am going to go over the syllabus. I will be um, counting attendance based on these lectures that I'll be downloading so I can see who watches these lectures and where you skip. I know it's very tempting to skip these longer lectures because we're used to this rapid um, bites of information due to social media and our attention span. But this is a class. It's two hours of lecture a week and four hours of lab. And four hours means that you're going to be spending time off the computer and making artwork. 
And these lectures, I'm going to try to keep them really um, clean and simple with uh, video references and images so that it's just not me talking head on the computer that you could actually engage with a lot of the wonderful artwork that's out there. Uh, I'm also going to open up the space for you to share some of the, your favorite artists. Uh, I know Instagram is a big way of discovering contemporary artists and what the cool generation is doing. I want all of that. So the first lecture is going to be posted every Tuesday morning, talking about the, the week's assignments, a little bit of a historical background on drawing, uh, and some contemporary artists so we, for us to look at. And then the second lecture will be Thursday morning, talking a little bit more specifically about technique, style, and different tricks for us to start learning, shading, composition, uh, two point, one point perspective, all that good stuff. And so these lectures you are supposed to watch at your own time. Uh, anytime on Tuesday or Wednesday, you could watch the first lecture and anytime on Thursday, the second lecture. A lot of assignments, our assignments are going to be due Saturday night. Just to give you a little bit more flexibility. Uh, what ends up happening is students uh, wait till like 11.45 at night to finally submit your work. Try not to do that. I'm giving you an extra day in the week just to, you know, maybe spend Saturday morning drawing, uh, catching up on your work. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and share the screen so that we can um, agree on the basics of this class. Here we have my uh, slideshow. This work is of Egon Shai, Egon Shiel. I don't know how you pronounce it. I speak Spanglish, both Spanish and English, kind of chopped up in both sides. But nonetheless, this is an, uh, a very important, uh, beautiful mark-making artist. And we're going to go through different contemporary and um, artists from different time periods just to uh, have a little crash course introduction. This is the, the home page of Canvas. Um, it's set on the, on the syllabus. And you're going to go ahead and press this PDF a file here is going to open up a new page where you can see the document. Um, I'm not going to read it through it right now because there's a lot of information. Uh, we'll be going over it um, on Thursday. Um, I just want to make, make it clear that attendance will be taken for points, uh, for participation points, uh, by viewing the entirety of the lectures. I mean, I do spend a lot of time trying to gather images and content and influences to understand how we're going to approach drawing and observation, observing the world around us through mark making. Um, and its relevance today in contemporary society. It's not something that uh, we did as cavemen. Um, with uh, fire and charcoal. It's something that still plays a huge role on how it shapes our understanding of reality. Um, and we're gonna talk about these things. The most important part of Canvas, again, I, uh, I shared this through that quick announcement. Hopefully everybody saw that video, but this is my last semester's class. Um, Zoom A is going to be Tuesday morning, Zoom B is going to be Thursday morning, um, and then everything else is going to be kind of underneath the, them. Um, video assignments, uh, short video quizzes, these quizzes are just going to be like a few questions um, about these short uh, four minute videos of contemporary artists that use drawing as their main medium. Um, just to get a variety of examples for our final piece. Remember the first part of the semester, we're just going to be doing real exercises like uh, push-ups, sit-ups, laps, um, scales of your musician, right? Um, what kind of other uh, exercises do we do? Is there exercises for cooking? Um, I don't know, like mixing the eggs. 
exercises, exercises, um, just getting familiarized with the material, with the process, with the styles and techniques. Uh, Mid-semester, we're going to start pushing for an individual language, uh, your voice, your way of expressing yourself through the medium that we were learning. And then towards the end, we're going to have a, a, a final project um, to turn in. So there we go. Assignments are um, discussions, video responses, and uh, sketchbook um, drawing observations. And then we'll have larger um, uh, assignments during that time. So the larger assignments will be like a three week. You're preparing, you know, three weeks and you're working on it for three weeks. I know a lot of you are going to wait for the last minute. I can't do nothing about it, but I'm going to be able to tell, right? Because um, I'm going to be asking for the progress of this work. Again, um, I want this class to be um, something that you're looking forward to. Um, and the way to do that is to uh, possibly understand um, the benefits of, of drawing, um, of drawing what you see, um, even through uh, the frustration. I know this it could be frustrating to try to, uh, for example, draw a hand. I don't think we're going to do that. Um, but there's a lot of tricks that we, we're going to learn um, in this class. Any questions? I wish we were live. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I've been doing that for the last 20 years, so I should be all right with that. I'm gonna go to the slideshow. We're going to be going through a different artist's work more extensively. Right now, I just want to give an overview of the diversity of the quality of line that different artists bring. Um, and so every artist, every student brings their own individual mark making qualities. And you see Egon here has a very uh, kind of dramatic depiction of the bones and of the muscle elongated kind of um, struggling figures um, I say struggling um, you'd have to see his larger body of work um, they're very sensual very sexual uh, figurative drawing very about the the flesh of the body and the activities that takes place uh, we'll be uh, looking at their lives, their personal lives, and how their personal lives reflect on their work. And so we're going to be um, kind of doing kind of an autobiography of our lives through our drawings, believe it or not. So um, hopefully we reach that point. And of course, artists take 10, 20, 40 years to, to reach that language. So we're going to try to do it in 18 weeks. Um, say something through your lines about you, who you are in the world, right? Do we have Kat, Katie Kolowitz? I call her Kathy Kolowitz, but it's Katie Kolowitz. Um, another uh, very important artist of the 20th century, um, talking about the human conditions of poverty and starvation. Um, she was uh, an advocate for human rights. Uh, she believed that Human suffering was something that we could work towards eliminating. Uh, she believed in the kindness of mankind and our ability to organize in ways where we can limit the amount of suffering that happens in the world. Um, sharing our collective responsibility for one another, right? And uh, her drawings and her prints were very powerful in um, distributing that message. And we're going to talk about her life, the time period she grew up in, 
the political systems that were in place at that time. And we're going to try to um, relate her experience, her work to uh, what's going on now in our lives, right? Uh, we're living in uh, extremely historical moments right now. And where we should reflect these moments in our drawings. I know it's a lot to ask, but we can do it. That's her portrait. We got Kiki Smith, a, a little bit more contemporary artist. Um, she was more surreal talking about the dream world, the metaphysical, other forms of knowledge, maybe ghosts, maybe animal spirits. Uh, maybe that's something that you're more in touch with. Um, we're dealing with other forms of knowledge. What does that mean? Psychic powers, um, intuition, uh, dreams, uh, whatever your fantasies are. This was this is where fantasy world becomes truth, and no one can tell you that um, that you're delusional because we're making art. You know, we're not passing laws. Uh, that affect other people. We're manifesting our own um, imagination. And a lot of us have experiences with the supernatural, maybe. Uh, things that we can't explain through science, maybe. And this is where we can manifest those things. And so Kiki Smith translated a lot of her images, a lot of her visions into sculpture and drawing. And that's a portrait of her. Charles White, African-American artist from the early uh, 1900s, depicting the black figure in American society uh, in the South. Uh, his a rendering of line, a charcoal marks and textures, and the quality that the light played, the light and shadow in his figures. Um, Just the majestic strength of the working a black African American worker. Um, very important artist, American artist. Mm, that's another picture of him, a little bit younger. Basquiat, 1980s. We uh, move forward in time. And Basquiat was. Um, an interesting character. He was always a poet, an artist as a young teenager. Um, he was a graffiti artist. He had a very specific quality in line. Um, his mother took him to museums in, in Brooklyn, Manhattan uh, since he was young. And so he was very well versed in the art world. A lot of people try to depict him as this homeless uh, uh, drug artist. Uh, roaming around the streets of Manhattan in the 80s, but uh, in reality, he was a very well-studied, uh, self-taught. Well, he went to an art school in, in Manhattan, and and he had access to, to the museums. You know, it's not like um, it was all just raw. Um, he, he knew what he was doing. And uh, you might think that this is something that your ch child can do. This is not art. But in reality, he was um, depicting the, uh, uh, the character or the personality of, of what the United States was going through in the 80s in Manhattan. It was uh, a very rough place to live, a bohemian artist and movements and money and uh, the AIDS epidemic. Uh, multiculturalism was, was challenging the doors of of power to get more representation into history, into the museums from communities of color. Um, there was a lot, lot going on, and Basquiat was able to capture it in, in these um, really loose, childlike marks. But if we study his work, the composition, the content, the color, the mark making is very, very powerful. And there's a portrait of Basquiat. Um, we're going to be studying these artists more in detail. So. Um, this is just a quick little introduction. Try to keep this lecture short. Willem Kentridge, we just saw a video of him in the opening. Um, I don't know, I just love the rawness of charcoal. Charcoal is just burnt wood, compressed. Um, one of the oldest mediums that we've used. And it's, it, it, it just, for me, has a very 
a special um, physicality to it. It's almost like um, drawing with sculpture, right? You're dragging this old burnt piece of wood on the surface. <sighs> to talk about the rawness of human emotion. Um, and there he is, there's the image of him. Margaret Callinger. She was a street artist in San Francisco uh, from the East Coast, made her way out here. She was connected to hobo culture. I don't say it in an offensive way, but uh, more free-spirited musicians traveling uh, back in the day. Uh, but she's a she was a contemporary artist. She died at age 30, very young age. Um, her work was part of the mission school of street graffiti artists uh, that were considered outside, outsider artists, uh, painting on trains, uh, just painting on bus stops or whatever they could to try to tell a story of a certain forgotten population. Uh, she did go to Stanford eventually, got her master's, and so she was educated, um, but she did have that connection to street culture in San Francisco. And so we're going to talk about her work. She became very well known, very successful at a very young age. Um, <clears throat> you can start noticing that every artist has a different uh, aesthetic value. Aesthetic is their own sense of beauty. When we try to learn drawing and we try to copy the academic way of drawing, like the Michelangelo's, Leonardo's, uh, it, it kind of takes away from our own power. Um, I enjoyed learning how to draw in that way. There's a lot of beautiful, powerful techniques that you can take into your own work. But I think for me, for a beginning drawing class, I think I would like to rather focus on your own ability of storytelling through mark making. Barry McGee, another uh, mission school artist whose name was, he was known by the name Twist. Uh, this was a counterculture um, going against the billboards, corporation, advertisement, consumerism. They were like, no, that's too much noise. You know, let's go tag up the streets. Let's go, uh, you know, have the voice of the people of the working class. Here's the work of Banksy, underground artist. Um, we're going to go over that work. But think about what drawing is what messages it can give, whether personal, political, spiritual, social, economic, what, what kind of messages do you want to talk about in your work? This is going to be for our final projects, right? Um, there's another piece by Banksy. And of course, these kind of more academic, um, traditional ways of understanding drawing. We're going to study this form as well not in the figure this is not figure drawing class i encourage everybody to take figure drawing class it's a very powerful way of understanding line shape and form um, os gemelos brazilian twins the brothers uh, took the world by storm by doing these huge characters on abandoned buildings in the favelas of brazil And you start to see their individual language, their characters, inspired by the color and the architectural spaces of Brazil, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro. You gotta speak for, from where you come from. If you come from Clovis, if you come from Michoacan, if you come from the South, um, Everybody here came from somewhere, unless you're Native American, Yoka, you came from somewhere. You came from wealth, you came from working class, from poverty. What did your parents do for a living? What did your grandparents do for a living? What's your story? Here's more observational rendering of the human figure. studies for larger sculptures of Rodin. I don't know if you know the sculptor, the thinker and the kiss. 
But drawing is the beginning. The first steps of observation. You gotta learn drawing. If you're gonna study art. So, this class we're gonna have the basic assignments of uh, still life drawing, light shadow, uh, different marks. Um, you can learn all that stuff. How to use your eraser to create the illusion of light, of reflection, of weight. How to make something feel heavy. Um, here's some of the some of the um, diagrams and the process that we're going to be going about in uh, understanding how to move charcoal this is a student piece you notice on this side right here it, it's it's sinking the object rather than pushing it out so there's a little bit of um, um, overuse of charcoal here because it, it flattens the piece if this was the same value as as this over here it would push push the ball up into a three three-dimensional form um, but other than that, it's pretty successful. Two-point perspective. Learning how to create the illusion of space. This is very important um, discovery, you might say, in the Renaissance, prior to the Renaissance, where you, the artist started to depict space in more of a realistic form. For you architects, uh, interior designers, this is very important for you to learn. And then just basic tricks of shading. This is going to be our sketchbook drawing techniques to uh, reach um, this level here. All right, I think I went far enough. Um, here's my notes. Any questions, I'm always available. Seems I'm going to be stuck on the screen. This week's assignment. Don't forget, we still got assignments. Um, I don't know if I published it yet. Nope, I haven't, so I'm going to go ahead. It's the same assignment for this class. Introduction. I'm going to, uh, it should be, what the? All right, welcome to our class. Please take this moment to introduce yourself via two to three minute video. I need to see who I'm talking to. Um, I like talking to myself, but I need to know uh, who's out there. And also it's a good time for you to see who's in your class. So a few things, start with your name and something you learned, accomplished or discovered that you would not have if it were not for COVID-19 lockdown. Oof, a lot of stuff, right? A lot of bad stuff, uh, potentially good stuff. Um, sometimes it's not even right to label things good or bad. Sometimes things just evolve. Um, it could be as simple as uh, I'm, you know, more aware of my health or I'm drinking too much or um, you know, you got to uh, spend some time in the garden or you discovered uh, the toxic relationships around you. You can get personal or you can just be casual with, with how you dealt with the lockdown and conclude by telling us why you decided to return and take another semester of college through online classes. You could be honest and be like, you know what, this is a disaster for me, I don't know, online is just not my thing. Or you could be like, man, online, I have social anxiety, I don't like people, this is great. Um, so you're going to hit reply. Uh, this is going to expand, and then there's this little play button you're going to hit. There's the computer, and then there's record. You're going to hit record. It's going to show your messy room, or wherever you're at. You know, make sure your mic is connected. I have to always put MacBook Pro microphone. Should be automatic, but it's not. You can start recording. 
Hello, my name is Caleb Duarte. Um, what I've learned during this lockdown, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm back in online learning, blah, blah, blah. I could do better, I know. Um, but you get the idea, then you get, uh, you push finish, and then you push save. This is when you have to be really patient because um, it takes about three to five minutes. I know, it's super slow. Um, just let it go ahead and do that. The good thing about this is that we learn who's in class. This is, this is a practice to see how we can engage with each other. And then go ahead and comment on a student or two on their videos. Just say hi. Uh, thanks for sharing. Um, say hi. I also learned how to do that. Um, just to practice this engagement, all right? We're all um, we're all trying here to make the best of this online thing. All right, so there it is, and then you push post reply, and you can comment on other students. Work. All right, so that said. Um, welcome to um, the first week of school. Good luck this week. And um, send me any questions that you might have or concerns, materials coming on Thursday. See you guys soon.